Between the Bears, the podcast with Benny Silverman and Sal Zizo. Thanks for the Arco Para. Enjoy. Three, two, one. Welcome back to be. No, <clears throat> nope, not welcome back. <laughs> Dude, who knows? Stop, don't ask me that question again. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be difficult. Did I go back and plead the fifth of that one? <laughs> Welcome to BS the Podcast. We are here, episode 20, Sal. We made it. We're at the season finale, dude. How you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Uh, you know, it's going to be a good season finale, and... Um... Gonna, you know, we hope you guys are gonna like it. We got a good one. We got the legend Mike McGee coming on today. We might actually have some special guests. I don't know if anybody could notice uh, on the live feed. Uh, obviously, I am not in my uh, normal basement in my house. I'm actually in Mike Grella's place today. So we might have uh, maybe one, maybe two special guests coming on the show. So stick around for that. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have a good conversation with, with Mike McGee. We're gonna ask him some. Questions about his career, questions about what he's doing now, what he sees in the future, um, and let's not let's not wait anymore. Let's, let's get him on the show. <laughs> Welcome back to BS the Podcast, and we got Mike McGee. Dude, you're our last guest on the show. Welcome on the show, man. Um, <laughs> bro, you, you there, dude? Yeah, I'm fucking here. What do you mean? I couldn't hear you. Dude. I, said, I, 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 said, mic was... ha- I said thanks for having me. Oh, right, we didn't nice. hear that. Oh, oh my bad. Sorry. All right, I don't, Mike. I don't know if you've uh, heard any of these shows, but we started pretty easy. Although you never plead the fifth, so we're not going to start very easy this time. But we do little <laughs> quick hitters where it should be get warmed up, and they've been recently demoted to slow hitters because we take forever on these questions. All right. And uh, then we'll get into some interview questions about your career and what you're doing now. And then uh, we'll let Ike try and interrogate you and uh, get you to plead the fifth. All right, cool. All right, let's do this. We're going to start off hot, bro. You are known to be one of the best LA Galaxy players of all time, but more importantly, one of the best goalies in LA Galaxy history of all time. So at that, I want you to rank these goalies in LA Galaxy history from best to worst. Okay. David Bingham, Donovan Ricketts. Kevin Hartman and Jaime Pinedo. You said best to worst. Best to worst or worst to best. It doesn't matter. All right, I'll go. I'll go. Ricketts number one. Hartman number two. Um, Pineda stole my jersey eighteen, so he's going four. And then I'll throw. Who was the other dude? <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. Holy, oh, that's Bingo. Oh, Bingo. Bingo. Serving Bingo. Bingo. LA Bingo. Uh, we'll, we'll throw Bingham third, but that's a uh, yeah. That, that's my order. All right. Cool. All right. That was quick. And painless for some. Oh. All right, we'll move on to the next one. Get nervous Be- already, man. Hands <laughs> are Be- sweat. Better city to live in: New York, L.A., or Chicago? Live in Chicago. Chicago. You get some. I feel like you had some good times in New York, though. Didn't you have roommates in New York? Yeah, there's some reasons I can't go back to New York, man. I, <laughs> I had some good times there. I'm not. I want to. Dude, yeah, you got to tell me, at least share a story from like the apartment. I know you were with uh, Hunter Freeman and Gordon, Sasha's brother. So tell me one story from that time in New York. I got nothing for you, man. Absolutely. Absolutely nothing. Do you remember yeah. Indy Nights in, in New York? No, th- no. Those those days are over. I've, I've, I got two kids now. I've moved on. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got literally those, day, those days are done. All right, 18 to 24 making like 50 grand which i thought was 50 million <laughs> dude i'm i'm ashamed of myself but now i put the, i put that behind me all right fair enough we'll we'll move on then we won't we won't force you to tell us any stories that'll bring up past memories and ghosts and closet skeletons and all that stuff so all right best teammate you've ever had landon donovan omar gonzalez alan gordon or mikey stevens oh shit can I, uh, just the best. You don't have to tell me in order. Just give me the best one and why. All right. Not, not Landon. We'll eliminate him. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll go dude. Gordon, Gordon and Mikey Stevens are our next level human beings. So can I, can I give him a tie or no? I'll, yeah, I'll, pick, I'll, him, I'll, 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 I'll go, I'll go with Mikey Stevens. That's my, Mikey that's my fucking guy, Chicago right? guy, right? Yeah, why, yeah. why was he such a good teammate, dude? Dude, he just he just didn't care what anybody thought or said, whether it was Beckham or Bruce or anybody. He he didn't give a shit. Dudes would be trying to tell him like trying to tell him like chill out and practice or like he he didn't care. So he was a he was a great pro and a, and a great dude. 
All right, like that. All right, this. I, 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 was, just, I, I was I was his teammate uh, in the under twenties, and if he had that mentality as a pro, you could only imagine him <laughs> when we were college kids. <laughs> I mean, Mikey's the best. I was playing soccer with him yesterday, and we're playing with a bunch of like fifty year old Ukrainian dudes, and like Josh Wolf, and he's still he's still fit as can be, just buzzing around, just like really? playing to win. Yeah, he always was bro, a little this chubber. Bull- I don't know. He, the last <laughs> time I saw bro. like. In freshman year, he went out, I think, every single yes. night. Yeah, didn't had a matter, good time in college, performed. bro. He was good. Yeah. He was good. Yeah, Chicago you, boys, got, we got a problem for sure. <laughs> he was at UCLA, last time I, and I thought he was literally a Hollywood celebrity. I was like, how are you going out so hard as a freshman in college? I don't actually understand. No, nah, he, dude, he, he's the best. Dude, I was just going to say, last time I saw Mikey Stevens, he – national team was in kansas city and he was over there and i was like dude you're with the national team that's awesome like what are you doing he's like i operate the drone (laughs) (laughs) and you never know whether he's serious or kidding you you do it serious that time but like you never have any any bro i'm watching training and i see this drone up there and i'm trying to look for mikey (laughs) stevens he has like a joystick just like it's like he's playing a video game out there (laughs) I didn't know that's what he does now. Yeah. All right. This is the last one. And this is a serious question. Are you mad that you didn't win the award for star is born with lady Gaga, the Oscar award? The what? The Oscars. <laughs> oh, this is a fucking, uh, a Bradley Cooper joke. I get it. <laughs> oh, I, I want to know. I want to know if you ever actually get like people actually think you're Bradley Cooper. It happens, man. Yeah. My mom, my mom was with them in Aspen. I knew who I was. So that was my, that was my claim to fame, man. You knew you, they were Mike. Mc, you yeah, were Mike my, 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 my mom saw him in Aspen and went up to him and was like, hey, I got to tell you something. You know, my son, uh, you know, gets all the time. He looks like you. And his response was the fucking soccer player. So <laughs> That's great. And that then is we, so I was, cool. I was, I was, I was, my mom FaceTimed and we were talking and laughing our asses off. He's a, no he's a way. Good, it, could, it could be a lot worse. Yeah. Uh, That's I love all right. Soccer player. <laughs> disrespect. <laughs> Dude, the disrespect. <laughs> Right here, I am like piping him up, like and here the district. Yeah, you're right. I, well, but at least he knows who you are. I mean, that's so true. He, maybe he gets called Mike McGee. I don't know. Maybe you're famous. I don't there know. Go. I, I like you, man. Thanks. <laughs> gonna be bad, but I like where it's at right now. <laughs> um, well, actually, today was like the fastest slow hitters we've ever had. So we we can actually upgrade them back to quick hitters. That that's all the quick hitters that I got, and then we can move into the the main interview and. Honestly, I'm going to I'm going to hit you up with this question that I've always wondered what the truth is and what actually, you know, the hell happened. We were together in 2014 at January camp under Jurgen Klinsmann six months before the World Cup. And if I'm not mistaken, it was the first time you had been with the national team or for a while or ever. No, I'd been in a bunch of camps, but somehow with, somehow eluded games here yeah. with Jurgen or with Bruce. Yeah, I got called to uh, two camps with Bruce. I dude, I even got called to two to get two caps and got a concussion and post concussion syndrome. Um, and then yeah, Jurgen just one camp with Jurgen. So in that camp, I feel like you were at least going to get a cap and maybe start in the beginning of the game. And maybe what one or two days before you got extremely sick and you like missed pregame talk or my, I think it was, you got sick the day before, wasn't it? So I'm, I'm oh, wondering I, what the hell happened. Bro, I, the, the training before, I've, I was drinking one of those stupid smoothies they made us drink. Remember that? It was like... Dude, was, I remember all the stuff they made us drink. It was all dumb. Yeah, pills Is and that smoothies. the beet juice and, thing? Dude, I had no clue. It was it was one thing after another. And I'm a big, like, just water and Gatorade guy, you know? Like, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to drink the smoothie. But they had us drinking it, and I, I drank it. And it, 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 I'm not even going to lie. It tasted funny as I was drinking it. I saw Wondolowski standing there before I... Before I'm just kidding. <laughs> I saw him hovering around my cup. He sprinkled with his hand. So he was hovering, dude. No, I'm just kidding. No, dude. I, and then literally within like three hours, I was, I was, uh, you know, I never got off the, uh, the bathroom floor. So that was, dude, that was awesome. Thanks for bringing that up, man. I appreciate it. So Wando roofied you. <laughs> we forgot to ask him that when he was our guest. Yeah. We're going to have to bring him back on the podcast. To, to ask <laughs> the said you roofied him. What's the truth to the story, Wando? And uh, I, I shouldn't have drank those stupid things. So, so you're again poisoned? Like, who poisoned you, bro? Someone poisoned you. Well, I thought I just told you, but Johnny, I got to make up another name. All right. Who, who, who else started in the game? Was it Wando? And dude, it was Landon. Landon. Dude, how bad was Landon in that camp? He poisoned me for sure. 
I don't know. Man. I, I remember that camp. I don't think I was the greatest in that camp, so I can't be talking too much. But yeah, that camp was that camp was brutal, dude. I mean, we had. Do you remember some of the things that we played? We played a four goal game in Brazil. Do you remember this four goal game? We were doing six a days in in Brazil, and the fields were like the grass was like nine inches high. <laughs> like, dude, I had no. It was clue so hot. It's summer in Brazil that time, so it was like scalding hot. We the grass was really thick. We hot had grass. a game where we played. We had four goals. It was four balls. Do you remember this? It was two teams, what? four balls, if four goals. Shot, it went to the other games. side. <laughs> Bro, it, it was like this. Four, oh. one team had to just keep possession, and the other team had to try and steal the ball and score in one of the four goals. But like at times, you only have like 11 players on the field. So like, let's say me and you are on the same team, and we're like just possessing this one ball, not allowing the other team to take it. At, at any given time, there's another ball like shot at us from half the other, the other side of the field. And we're just like trying to dominate two balls and not let somebody Bro, steal it. There from was us. like six concussions that day. Nobody had any clue what was going on. The best part was he'd show up like right before the drill started. And then as soon as it ended, he just left. He was like the guy. The guy was I, I'm going to I'm going to watch what I say. But that was yeah, that was that was a good. Trust me, you don't need to. You don't need yeah, that was, we've uh, we've talked enough about Benny's I, talked I, enough about Jurgen. Bro, my you're food, just my got food poisoning. My food poisoning summed up my entire national team experience. <laughs> Jurgen just got hired as Ecuadorian national team camp, so I can't wait to watch some Ecuador soccer. Is he? Now. Yeah. Wait, the, uh, wait, the manager or you said camp? Coach. Oh, sorry, coach for Ecuadorian national team. Oh, yeah. that's going to be. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's it. like public information. I mean, I, I think I heard, I read that somewhere. Maybe it's he just like he didn't call you up to let you know beforehand. It's, no, yeah, it's the me. onion. It's got, I saw, the I saw a helicopter <laughs> flying I over Newport that. beach. I, saw <laughs> I, I, I just, I remember my first day in camp and I woke up in the morning and I go to the meal room and I'm like, I'm hungry. You know, like I, I passed out early cause we had nine a days and there's no food in there. And they're like, yo, before you can eat, you got to go on an hour run. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's an empty stomach run, dude. It's an empty stomach run. And listen, now, like looking back, I guess there's some like kind of science to it, but like, you know, it's day one, like just get at least like a yogurt or like, <laughs> like something would have just been great, you know? And like, dude, it was every morning. So like, oh, well, at least after you were done. at least after you were done with those, you got like a nice, delicious whole wheat waffle <laughs> that you could eat. Dude, no ketchup. He, he had a 10 minute conversation with me about how I shouldn't eat ketchup. I'm like, dude, it's too late, man. I'm like 33. There's too much in the system already. <laughs> All right, Mike, uh, let's I get away from January games. camp and the national team, but, uh, let's get, uh, let's talk about galaxy a little bit. Like when you played a galaxy, you had some ridiculous teammates, really good team. You guys had a lot of success. I want to know, we, we, we've had Landon on the show and he told us a little bit of how the dynamic was with himself, with Keno, with Beckham. How, how were those three? How did you fit in with that group? Like how, how did that dynamic work inside the locker room and stuff? Um, I mean, dude, these, I mean, these are literally three of the best pros on the planet. So like getting there, it was, it was actually one of the best things that ever happened to me. Cause I was coming from, you know, being a kid, then going to New York and I had a, you know, you might, might not have guessed this, but I had a lot of bad habits and, uh, you know, getting to LA and watching these guys train every day was, was probably the best thing ever happened to me. So obviously coming off Beckham's book where some guys were hammering him, it was weird, but you know, what those guys did on the field, despite everything was, was special. Yeah. And what about how did Bruce keep it all together, dude? I feel like he's like such a good, like man manager. Uh, you know, he was, there, there was, there's probably no coach on the planet or especially no American coach that could have, that could have kept that, kept that together. Um, that that book came out. What was it called? Uh, or Beckham experiment. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, half the guys in the locker room had bad quotes that Beckham saw and somehow, you know, testament to Beckham for, um, you know, keeping his shit together and these guys for, you know, finding a way to win. Cause we, we, we got good pretty quick. And, you know, as much as those guys probably hated each other at the time, they, they found a way to, to, to put things aside and, um, you know, we, we went on a nice run. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and then, I mean, you had a really successful time at Galaxy. You eventually moved uh, to Chicago to play for your hometown team. And that was kind of crazy in itself, right? Because that was, I think that was right when Robbie Rogers had just come out, right? And he wanted to come yeah. back into soccer. <coughs> and uh, how did that go down? Because I know you wanted to go to Chicago, but how did that all go down? Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, Robbie was trying to get to the ga uh, trying to get the Galaxy and Firehead is right. So it was every day for about a month. Robbie's training with us and trades are trying to happen. And Frank Klopas, who's a coach of Fire, was a friend of mine. And um, 
kind of out of the blue, probably illegally, he just called me and asked me if I wanted to <laughs> play for the fire. <laughs> Should I not be saying this? <laughs> no, I don't think it matters. No, yeah. So he, yeah, it's like, you don't matter anymore. Nobody cares. <laughs> so, uh, Klopas, you know, we, we, we briefly spoke and I, you know, I told him, you know, it's been a childhood dream of mine. So Bruce and Klein pulled me in the, in their office and like, listen, we don't want to trade you, but you know, the fire's kind of only demanding you. Do you want to go? And, um, yeah, I, I said, yes. So it worked out. Yeah, it worked Actually, out. Worked out. You, yeah. you, play, you played, uh, how many games did you already play for Galaxy when you went over there that year? I have no, uh, I don't know. 10 or less? About that, yeah. Yeah, and then you go over there and you have, I mean, MLS MVP season. So, yeah, I think it worked out for you for sure and for Chicago. Um, I don't know how many more years Robbie played, but I think they won a championship with him as well. So It, it, it worked, worked out, out for everybody. everybody. And Robbie, you know, with everything he was going through, he had to... Yeah, he had to get home, and so do I. And it, you know, it, it couldn't have been better. I was yeah. gonna say, uh, what's what's crazy is now being in my position. When you get traded mid year and to go win an award, I don't think people understand how crazy it is. Like your life is in chaos, moving everything, moving everyone. Things are happening, and putting it aside and showing up week in and week out is like I just and I just found out is I, I look back and I can't even remember how it happened. And so the fact that you and I did it before the year, kind of. And you did it mid season, so I commend you for figuring out a way to do it. Yeah. Um, no, I appreciate you saying that. I, I was lucky, right? So, literally, I mean, I, bro, the first, I never watched soccer as a kid, then the fire announced they had a team. So, it, it was the first team I ever wanted to play for. So, starting, for, even, the, even when I was about to get drafted, I called Bob Bradley and told him I want to play for him. And then he called me back a month later and he's like, all right, cool. I'm going to draft you. But I just, I just signed with the New York and I'm like, hold on. <laughs> like, <laughs> I said Chicago. Uh. <laughs> Bob Bradley. I met the Chicago fire. No. Uh, so from that moment on, the amount of times I tried getting back home, you know, I got a close family and friends and, you know, for literally since 15 years old, I've, all I want to do is pay for the fire. So, um, so that, that hecticness you probably had for me, it was just like my, my first game, I had like 220 people at the game. <laughs> And I mean, it was, it was just, yeah, it was, crazy. Surreal. It was yeah. really surreal. The support is something that, you know, is, is, is really hard to, hard to describe somebody unless you play, you know, in front of your hometown team. So Frank Lopez is the one who made it happen. So I, I owe him, uh, and I, I owe him more than I can, more than I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm curious to know what you think of the fact that they're going to get out of Bridgeview and move over back to, you know, downtown city and how, how that'll work out if you'll be able to get, you know, fans in that stadium and how many fans that'll be and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, dude, I, I have no clue. It, it, it's awesome. It's an awesome step. I think Chicago has been, been pretty much deprived of, of soccer and Bridgeview was just a hard place to get to. And at the time it was a great idea. It was pre, you know, teams putting these, these stadiums downtown. Um, so, and, and, and Bridgeview financed it. So it was, it was kind of a no brainer, but, um, it, it's bittersweet for me because obviously 80 years or oh, shit, not 80 years, 20 years from now, I want to bring my kids there and say, this is where I got MVP and this is where I played. Um, but for the city to get Chicago and it's, dude, it, it's ready, man. And this city, the city supports winners and, and, and loves to go out. So, um, if they could put a good product on the field, which I think Mansueto will do. And I, you know, I don't think he, I don't think he was going to buy a team for 320 million and then, you know, stop spending there. So I think he's going to do, he do the right things. And, you know, this kid, this city supported the Cubs for, 20 years when they, when they couldn't, they couldn't even reach the playoffs. So yep. um, my point is, is, is I think Joe's going to put a, put a good team on the field and, and I think people are going to show up. Nice. Um, I think it's funny that you brought up uh, your kids. You want to like show your kids, you want to get them into soccer. So I got three kids. I know Sal's got three kids. We're soccer players, you know, so it's, it's great. I'm like, I'm not going to push my kids in, in any one direction, but it'd be awesome if at least one of them played soccer and hopefully has some kind of talent in the sport. So I, I saw, you know, your whole thing on Twitter where you talked about how you're trying to get your daughter into soccer and that you like couldn't do it. And then finally she got to watch the women's world cup and then she was out there on her own kicking the ball. So I know you got like an award for it, but like, how, how does that feel, dude? Like, is she still playing? Like wh what's going on? Yeah, she's playing every day now. So it's been whatever, how many weeks since the World Cup? And she she literally fell in love with it that day. So we're playing every day in the living room. She plays two games a week and trains three or four days a week. And you know, it's crazy. It never crossed my mind that you know uh, she just she never wanted to be a guy soccer player. She wanted to play girls soccer and look up to them. So the day she got to see, um, you know, these Alex Morgan and I was showing her videos of Mia Hamm and, and all this stuff. I think since she saw that, she, she fell in love. So I'm, I'm a dummy for not realizing that, but it's, it's not too late.
Oh, representation, awesome. man. Yep. Yeah. Representation is a big thing, man. It really that's is. funny. It's funny you say that. My daughters literally think that every time I say, let's go play soccer, they're like, dad, only guys play soccer. Cause that's like all <laughs> they've seen is yeah, like, go to my games, watch me play. And I'm like, no, like, and I just like had to go on YouTube and like show videos of little girls playing soccer. And now they want to as well. So, Bro, so with my, my daughters, I have an, I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old. The five-year-old does not seem like she's remotely interested in any sport. She's more about like, she's very girly girl, you know? So she's about putting makeup on, putting dresses on, maybe ballet or dancing and that kind of thing. And then the other one I could see having some kind of potential in, in sports and maybe playing soccer or something. And they have little activities at school. So my youngest daughter uh, has just started playing like some soccer at school to kind of see what she, what she likes. And so after school, I pick them up and, and my youngest daughter's like, yeah, today I played soccer. And out of nowhere, my oldest daughter's like, I hate soccer. It is not fun. I absolutely hate soccer. So it's like, dude, sounds like my kid. Exact yes. same age. Just let a little bit of me die inside. Yeah. Dude, yeah it's, but, it's uh, a real thing. Yeah. It's no, it's a great story. So like I am currently at Mike Grella's house. So you may or may not know Mike was a big hit in the podcast a little bit earlier. And to contrast a little bit of your story, I'm actually going to have, have them join us. So Mike, pull up a seat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Grelladino. I can't wait for this story. Oh, oh, there there is, boys, what's going on? Wait, when, gonna... I, when I found out you were, at, you were still in New York and you are at Grella's house, I, I was losing it. I can't believe he's back. Grella's always ready. Po- on the yeah. field, <laughs> podcast, don't matter. It's a I got to change the mic That's here to make sure it like, picks up. 1910, bro. Ellis Island. There he is. I think it's like this. I honestly don't know if it's like this or we're all like half falling asleep and played 60 holes of golf. In one day. <laughs> so, so here's, here's what I want to hear, dude. Mike was telling me a story today, right before we went to play golf or might've been yesterday. I can't remember, but we're, I, I, I'm going to let him tell it, but you got two kids, right? You are sorry. Three kids, but two boys, three kids, two boys, one girl, uh, yeah, bring it up, bring it closer to you, bro. And, uh, no, my experience with you soccer so far. So my son really excited to play. Obviously we're a soccer family. So, you know, I go every Sunday to watch him play and he's super pumped, you know, and he's like uh, a maniac in the backyard. So I'm like, oh, maybe we've got a player on our hands, you know, <laughs> we bring him out to play. And, my god man it's it's so hard to watch man it's so hard to watch um for so many reasons so i just said to my wife this past week and i'm like i'm gonna get an ulcer i'm gonna watch this stuff so i gotta i can't this is gonna be my last sunday so so do you like do you bring him over sometimes and tell him like hey you gotta yeah. do it yeah so the first the first week i was him. like all right look you didn't know what, what what was going on the field was a little too small for making all the excuse in the world for him <laughs> second week i went to watch him play somehow he was worse uh, so you know i spoke to him after the game and was like look you know keep in mind he's four years old so oh. I, I spoke to him after the game I'm like look like it's not good enough and like you know <laughs> actually like do something and uh and uh so the next game he goes out there and all the parents are watching and all the parents are happy and stuff and i'm sitting there on the sideline and i'm just watching him not saying anything and every single time he did anything he's like dad is that good dad was that good he's like doing a corner kick 50 yards away from me. he does the corner kick then he runs over to me dad was that good and all the parents know that i've obviously i've been on his case so so that was my last sunday i won't be going anymore <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Oh, Wait, look, 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 my cheeks are hurting right now, dude. This guy, so this guy's got uh, two boys and a girl. Uh, the old boy, the Mikey's four. Right? Mikey's four, yeah. And Mateo's two. Mateo's two. Mateo's yeah. got. Some he's gonna be two though. in a week. Yeah, he's good. He can play. So yeah, he's he like can little play. Got to do so, man. Yeah, if, really you, if you can get if you can get one out of your three kids to you know get some kind of talent that you had, then. I feel yeah, like man. But, I mean, I get my boy Mikey. He's like four years old. He's ninety percentile for his height. Kid ripped to shreds. Perfect <laughs> soccer body. Can't kick a ball. And then I get the little guy. He's two years old. He's two years old. It's like a little tank. Dude, I'm cramping, can't, man. Can't move, but perfect technique. Fearless. Dude, I'm in cramps as I fucked up my last game with the Galaxy. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, shit. Not Mike. So if you oh. give him to play, dude, you got to be happy. Yeah, well, whatever happens. Mike, you'll be good yeah. at something else. He'll be like the intellectual. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe he's a late bloomer. We'll see. Yeah. Awesome. Oh. Dude, right. how, how do we go from here? This is <laughs> the no, there's nowhere to go but down, man. There's nowhere to go. Oh. Yeah, that hurt. That really, that hurt me. Yeah, yeah. Wait, we 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 got we got a full we got a full like uh, crew here, by the way. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to get three, but we only have two. Oh, and- there he is. I'm gonna pass <laughs> him over, boys. Just put one on. Can you even do it? Honestly. So we got another veteran on the podcast, mm-hmm. Sasha Kleshin here as well. Um, oh. Sasha, you got you got a couple of kids too. I got a couple of kiddos. Vera doesn't play, does she? Vera plays. So my daughter played the first season. We signed her up. She was so pumped. And now, like, we signed her right up. Here. We, right here. We See signed you. her up for so- girls soccer. And we showed up to the first practice. And my wife didn't sign her up for girls soccer. Signed her up for co-ed soccer. So all the boys just beasted her for, like, <laughs> the entire season. And now she wants nothing to do with soccer. <laughs> That's a parenting decision. Then. Nothing to do with soccer. Bro, you got you to gotta make a better decision. At least get her in, in the right direction that, so she can at least enjoy it first. Yeah. I so mean, now, I mean, like, that's not your wife. So now she does uh, dance and gymnastics. She's good at gymnastics, right? And so, yeah, but I like to mess with her every week. And yeah. so, like, on Wednesdays, she's got nothing. And, and in the afternoon, she's just hanging out, like, watching TV after school. And I go, all right, Vera, go upstairs, get your soccer gear on. You got practice. Tonight, <laughs> she freaks out. Dude. For real, have you been to any gymnastics meets yet? No, I've just seen her. Just they just run around and do cartwheels. Oh, bro, but... enjoy enjoy those, dude. It's nine How hours on a your... Saturday. <laughs> dude, How worst. old is your daughter, Mike? She's nine. She's nine. She's nine. Yeah, she was she was full blown gymnastics, and dude, we, I yanked her from that real quick. It's a dude. It's a nightmare. It's a, literally a nightmare. <laughs> so do it, do it, Sasha. You. But my little, I think, my I, little I, guy. I think a different. Let's go for it. <laughs> my little guy's two and a half, and he's got a cultured left foot like his uncle Gordon. Oh, wow. Gordon. All, all he wants to do is just, he wants me to just toss him half volleys in the house all the day. I, I've seen videos of you doing that, actually. I'm like, it's, wow, it's, it's pretty impressive. His left foot is unreal. He won't, he won't touch the ball with his right foot. <laughs> So but you typical, can be a you could, lefties. Yeah, you could be a yeah. dead average left footed player and you, you can make a million bucks. So yeah. he's, Dude, he's Gordon, well your, your brother had the silkiest left foot maybe yeah. of all time. Yeah. It's not an exaggeration. Joke joke's yeah. over. That that dude was I'd be I don't know what I'd be if I had his left foot. Yeah. <laughs> Probably right. still a loop. So I, I feel like what we take from all of this, it's a blessing to have kids. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got zero. I got so a, thank you guys. <laughs> I got a guest question. I don't know if I, I was on the other. In all the right, room so on, so, on my so, phone. Be, so because we're we're here in you know Grella's household, one of the all stars of the podcast, we're gonna let and and Mike, you tweeted yourself, you do not plead the fifth, and I know we're not at the Ike's interrogation yet. I said that these two veterans of the podcast can give you a question. Uh, so I don't. Ha- I don't have a hard. Three. I don't have a hard question. Actually, this is just me trying to catch up with Mike because I haven't seen Mike in a couple of years. <laughs> Dude, I don't right. trust Sasha one bit. No, got, I promise. We got, I promise. We got seen Hall frat house days. <laughs> <laughs> is this- uh, I've known Mike. I think since I was a freshman in college. Okay. Um, that's been a long time. I can't believe how long ago that was. But no, for real, I don't have a hard question. I just want to ask: Has Chicago Fire? asked you to come in and do anything to work for the club like are you interested in working in soccer or are you just too busy slinging vodka around the city no i've uh we've had some we've had some meetings and um you know it's it's safe to say that we've we've not really seen eye to eye on some things and you know i've volunteered you know to to at least start talking i've met with nelson a couple times we've got the ball wrong we just can't seem to uh Can't see, can't seem to figure out what, what's the best way to go about it. But he's, um, you know, <laughs> dude, who knows? Not, don't ask me that question again. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, <laughs> this is going to be difficult. <laughs> that was supposed to be I, an easy I, question. Can I, can I go back and plead the fifth of that one? <laughs> If you couldn't answer this question, you were going to plead the fifth 100% uh, to a question. That's, that's my hometown team, man. There's nothing in the world I want more than this team to win, and I've, I've tried to – uh, you know, dude, sometimes you don't see that eye with people and, 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 right. and listen, it's within their right to go their direction. And, and, um, you know, I, I love to help. And one day I genuinely think that we're going to, we're going to 
find a way to make it work, but you know, it just hasn't happened yet. So let me, <laughs> just, let me ask you this. Would you be most interested in like, if you, if it's just up to you, like something like technical side, something like front office or business side or like what no, kind of, I want to, I want to be in the locker room every day. And, um, you know, I think I've, um, you know, I've, I, I genuinely think I got a good soccer IQ and, um, you know, I found ways to, um, you know, in the past make my teammates better. And I feel like I've been a good teammate and I feel like being around the guys every day I could help. So, um, well, uh, that's, you know, I, I want to be in the locker room. Plus it's, cool. I, I miss that, you know, it's, it's not a, it's not something you give up easily after 20 years being in a locker room every day with 30, you know, great dudes and that banter. And, um, you know, I generally feel I can give back in, in that way. Yeah. I, I feel as a guy, uh, talking about you who, who started at a really young age playing professionally and obviously you've had some ups and downs and you had a lot of fun in your life and in your career and stuff, especially in the early days. And you went through it all. And then you were a MLS MVP. Like you could help out a lot of young guys who are going through that with the Chicago fire. So I, I hope that you stay in the game that way. Yeah, no, it's true, man. I, I certainly, you know, did things the wrong way and at times the right way. And, um, you know, but one thing, one thing that I've, I kind of kept at all times was my, you know, my, my willingness to try to win on game days. And no, that was, that was well said, man. I definitely, definitely some ups and downs, but you know, I, I feel like I can give a lot back. Yeah. Sasha. I love, I loved yeah. watching you play, bro. And I wish we ever had, a, I wish we had one chance to play together in our careers, but I, I'm a big fan, bro. I never bro, played with a guy at 20. Sasha, what are your plans for I next said the, year? I said the same thing about McGee and I got to play with him once in, in January camp, 2014. Yeah. Dude, I just remember literally my best moment in that camp was playing you a no look pass. I don't know if you're going to remember this. We were playing like sm small goals, dude, like the tiny goals. And I just remember like I, I actually played, I played you that ball before you made your movement. And if you didn't make the movement, it would have been a bad pass. Well, you, I like figured that's the only way I could get you the ball. And you made a movement inside and cutting behind the defense. And it was like, ended up being a perfect ball and a perfect finish. Yeah, I'm not even saying it because you two are just here. Sorry, I can say I don't feel the same way about you. <laughs> it's a love <laughs> that, dude. It's turning to a left. Guys, you, you guys had something that, that most Americans don't have and in high soccer IQs. And, you know, to be honest, I oh, wish you guys. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. But, no, <laughs> let me finish. Let, let me finish. Um, no, 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 that's – stop. That's not what I mean. I came off there. Um, you know, I, I, things I learned when I got to play with Beckham and Robbie Keane and Landon and the way these guys saw the game was two plays ahead – and, you know, getting to train with you, Sasha, in New York and playing with Benny in that camp was was I didn't learn that till I till I got to play with those guys. So hats off to you guys for, for doing it on your own, because, you know, I got to see two of the two of the best ever, you know, play the game on a daily basis. And yeah, dude, I, I feel like Sasha, we're the three guys in the MLS history that got 20 assists. Two? Yeah, it used to be two, and then Maxi Morales showed up this season and was dropping dimes. But thank yeah. you, bro. I appreciate it. Only American, though, huh? Valderrama, Morales and you. All right. Well, I, do, does anybody have any more questions until we get yeah. to it? Where's Sasha the going next year? What, what's your plans for next year? <laughs> Dude, it, he's not on the podcast. You can't yeah. make him plead the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> Sal, free agency doesn't start until November 25th. Okay? Are so you a free agent? Yeah, yeah. Dude. He's, like 30, free he's like 36 and 17. That's the <laughs> rule. You gotta stop calling it free agency. It's a limited, restricted player movement. That's what I we need to call it. Many There's years of service and many years of uh, years. So <laughs> yes. uh, free agency is you get to take a pay cut wherever you want to go. Hold <laughs> your field, that's baby. True. Come to Chicago. You're a Sixteen year old homegrown signing. You get twelve years to free agency. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Twenty eight eight. God. Yeah. Well, I'm ready. So well, like, you can have I, me, I just you can have me on. He's like, no, no chance for striking. <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> strike allegedly, now. allegedly. Uh, you can bring me back on the podcast the first episode of next season, and then we'll talk about. Sounds good, bro. Wherever I am, bro. Perfect, perfect. All right. Uh, well, thank you, Sash. Thank you, Mike. Mike's already dealing with his son over there, dude. I don't know what's, <laughs> what's going on with him, but um, we appreciate all our our extra panel coming in today and friends of the you, podcast we're yeah. going out with a bang in the final se in the season i know though. man i mean nobody was expecting three guests in one so i wasn't even and i'm a part of the show so <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah do we have any more questions or are yeah. we going to get into the i've got one all right go so ahead. run us through your, your your vodka company like i, I i'm i'm very yeah. curious because I, it's been popping up recently and i've been seeing it and so um I'm, I, yeah i'm just curious i guess that's what you're, you're doing with a lot of your time now right yeah, so I, I started about a year ago um, as my career was winding down, which is about a five-year wind down. So I, I had a lot of time to think about it. 
Um, I, me, me, Landon Donovan, Omar Gonzalez, Todd Donovan, we take our win bonuses and we'd buy Johnny Walker blue and too expensive as shit. And we'd only drink it after wins. So I got a little bit nostalgic towards the bourbon, um, started learning about it, somehow stumbled on a vodka and, um, you know, I'm doing that for last year and it's been, it's been going well, man. No investors, just me. Um, launched in Minnesota, so I'm gonna need <laughs> I'm gonna need you to. Hey, start. I'm your guy, it, and it's called. So it's called knows. Sneak, Sneaky Fox. Thanks for the plug. Um, oh. no, so I'm in uh, Colorado, um, big time in Chicago, Minnesota, Florida, Tennessee next week. Um, so dude, I'm a salesman, man. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's about. I, it. I I love the name, and I've heard some rumors. Where does that come from? Yeah, so my oldest memory of drinking, my dad caught me, and um, as I was beginning to lie, he he cut me off and called me a sneaky fuck. And they wouldn't <laughs> let me put. They wouldn't let me put. That's then I ran, dude. My, if you didn't know, my dad's about six four, so he's, <laughs> he's a big dude. And um, yeah, that was that was my oldest memory. So I, they wouldn't let me put sneaky fuck on the bottle. So I, I went with fox. <clears throat> nice. I like All right, we'll know. love it, dude. I, awesome. I love I, I love like the the different things that you know players that we watch for a long time and, and they go in and do, do a different thing. So that's pretty cool. And, but like we said, I think it'd be awesome. You'd be back in the game and, uh, <laughs> that'd be, that'd be cool to see. Yeah, um, I'm trying. Well, one day you will be, bro. You will be. Uh, so anybody, Sal, anything else or we got, we got, uh, no, it's good. I was actually last... asking about the, the vodka as well. So okay. that's good. All right. One more. Well, I was just saying, hey, don't forget. He's a Chicago land, oh, Chicago land hall of famer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Man. I, you guys are yeah, you guys are buttering me up hey, right now. Yeah, yeah I am. Man. You know it's coming. I, I know what you're doing. Right? Yeah, yes, we've had, dude. He's he's on Hall of Fame, Chicago, dude. That's like no small feat right there. It's what like is, you and Derrick Rose are competing hand in hand for for the title. He's he, he buttering me up, man. I know, I know what's about to happen. <laughs> All right. Uh, with no further ado, let's get you in the last uh, interrogation of the season, dude. I really hope he brings it in hot because I know you are going to be cringing to plead the fifth, but you might have to. So you're currently on the hot seat. Welcome to Ike's interrogation. Oh, welcome, Michael. Into my room, the interrogation. Um, right off the bat, I'm going to make you plead the fifth. Um, so first question. You're, obviously, you're a huge Chicago <laughs> fan and you follow the team today. The seasons have been going well the last few years. So, if one of these two people needs to lose their job, who should it be? <laughs> Nelson, the GM, or Panovich, the head coach? <laughs> <laughs> Only one can stay. <laughs> oh, is it? What are you talking about, man? So, if someone's got to lose their job, who, who's losing it? Nelson or Panovich? <laughs> Stop drinking the water, Betty. <laughs> I'm getting nervous, bro. Fix the fault for, for, oh, the, for the previous bad seasons. Hey, Mike, let, let me just let you know one thing I forgot to mention. If you pl if you do not plead the fifth, you answer all five questions. You can ask any one of us any question you desire, and we cannot plead the fifth. All right. Well, clearly everyone's going to hear all of this. I think... <laughs> Fuck, dude. <laughs> I convinced myself there for a second I was going to answer the question. Um... <laughs> How much time you guys got? Can I can we go over pros and cons or I just gotta answer it? I mean you can take I'll, I'll, time, but yeah, if, you, if you can answer if you can find you know a what? way to you know what? the team lost, you know dude, the he's not made the playoffs in three years, Pano. Okay. Really, I, I don't you know I don't know Pano. I don't know if he's done a good job or bad job. I think if you're a coach you got you gotta find a way to win. So I think he's a great dude and I've I've he coached I, I think in this situation if you you know, maybe maybe a fresh start for him is the best. All right, you didn't get him to plead, bro. What's number two? I, I don't think he was going to. I, I had him with the hardest. He struggled with the easier Nelson layup. So I figured, <laughs> oh, this is going to be. <laughs> uh, okay, Qu question number two. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take a step back for a bit. Who's the craziest rager? Omar Gonzalez or Robbie Keane in the nightlife? Just so we're clear. Oh shit. Kino's the best. He's a, he's a great junk. Does karaoke. Omar, Omar five drinks and under. He's the best dude on the world. Number six. He's, he's fucking going to burn the world down. So <laughs> he's a crazier rager. Omar post fat five drinks is a, is a psychopath. <laughs> absolute, absolute psychopath. 
<laughs> I didn't even know that about him, dude. Oh, dude, you just got to walk I away. I think I heard that before, actually. Oh, dude, the worst. Dude, you, would think, it, it, you, would, you would think a dude that big would take more than five drinks to get crazy. I know, dude, I'm probably exaggerating. It might be like three. <laughs> <laughs> Cheap date. I love it. Trying to trying to hype him up, but no, he's yeah, Omar for sure. And he's breezing by these right now. Question three. Okay. Uh, well, we'll see what four and five have. Um, <laughs> four three's the, is foreshadowing. <laughs> no, three. Three is just the curious, curious one because I've always wanted to know how it was like playing on a team where the league made up rules to benefit you. Dude, it's the best, dude. You're just like you're losing one second, <laughs> and all of a sudden you just got a penalty kick. It was probably the best. <laughs> and I, bro, I played for the, for the Metro Stars, where like it was the other side, you know, like we had like six thousand fans in the stadium. <laughs> like you know, you're playing against the Galaxy, and then bro, then you play for the Galaxy, dude. Nothing better, man. You just you win games, and it's the best. Dude. Now they got four DPS. Oh, dude, they can't lose. They're a lot. Yeah. In the original Tamra, which was actually made for Omar. It's just wildness. Like, I, you know what? I don't even care. If I'm, hearing, cheating, I'm hearing some jealousy right now, but this is this is your segment. <laughs> Plead the fifth. Wow. We'll let you go. No, it's no, nothing jealousy about it. Just yeah, like, it's like it must feel real nice to just know that. Oh, dude, you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> You're playing Especially 14 against 11 typically. Bro, how about Maybe. how about in Houston when the lights when we were getting our ass whooped and the lights went off in the stadium like three times <laughs> every time? Really? We were at it. Oh yeah, dude. Okay. Was bad. That sounds You're that home. sounds like uh, that sounds like my Ravens when they got trying to get screwed over by the uh, by the Niners in the Saints. Uh, Didn't that help the Ravens though? Orleans. We were the Ravens. The Ravens were up by like twenty five points at like halftime. And then that like went off for like thirty minutes, and then we we almost yeah. lost that game at the end. It's a real thing, guys. You get get on the get on the right side of it. All right, Q, Q4. All right, Q4. Who, between these two, who do you not want to hang out with? Beckham or Landon? Landon. <laughs> <laughs> bro, how are you not going to hang out with Beckham, bro? <laughs> you saying who? Like, <laughs> I mean, that's I meant it in a, I, I meant it in a who's Landon. worse to hang out with. Yeah, Landon's worse. Yep. I just want to be clear. I just want to be clear on one thing. We had Landon on the show. He like made it seem like you were his best friend, though. Oh, dude, Landon's. I love Landon to death. But you're just you, dude, don't I, ever want to see him. I, I'm playing the game. Hold on. If you ask Landon who are you going to hang out with, McGee or Beckham, he's he's, he's he's trust me, you're going Beckham. <laughs> no he, way. Is he? No way he's saying that. <laughs> oh so. yeah, there will. That's a special case. But uh, dude, Beckham's like. <laughs> Like, dude, I mean, it's a win-win, first of all. And I love, love Landon. Bro, by the way, after Landon scored that goal in Algeria, we, we went to we went to Vegas. Or no, I'm sorry, against Algeria in the World Cup. We went to Vegas. And this dude was the biggest celebrity on the planet. So maybe, maybe that weekend I'm picking Landon. But on average weekend, you, I mean, you can't you can't not hang with Beckham. No, dude, yeah. Landon's my I, – I love Landon to death. He's, he's like my voice of reason every time I'm – Having a panic attack, I call I call him a guy. But dude, I mean, come on, you're not gonna hang out with Beckham on like a random weekend. <laughs> Touche. Sorry, sorry. Hang out with Beckham, to be honest. But anyway, Mike, yeah. Q5, bro. You know, you know what's coming, and I hope it's directed at you. Well, it, I want to get him, but I gotta go with. The, I, we have to shout go out our fans. Oh, it, it, bro. All right, this is this isn't hard though. It's just uh, it's a fan question. Um, actually, there's a couple good ones. <laughs> Uh, um, I'll, I'll just do this one. Accepting that you won't play the fifth. You, you, you obviously follow the national team, correct? Yeah. And seeing yeah. the results. Yeah. Okay. Of the of the guys who, of their starters, who would you cut from that roster or from that starting lineup, and oh. why? Oh, nah. This this might be the one that gets me. Um. Well, no, I don't know the lineup then. <laughs> I got it real quick. I? No, I have no clue who the lineup is. <laughs> so you got to ask me a different question. Bro, I don't even know if I know the full lineup. Like, I, mean, I can kind of guess. The guys who re- kind of regularly played that keep getting call ups and playing. You sure, know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you the. Saying, I'll give these meaningless games. No, yeah. just like well, I mean, some of them yeah, are. There's meaningless. only been meaningless. Well, to be fair, all of them are meaningful when you're trying to go through. Here, I'll, I'll give you a lineup. I'll give you a lineup. Can I give you a lineup? Well, I'll just answer the question. I already know my way out of it. So, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you don't want it to answer? an acceptable answer. All right, well, I'll take Michael Bradley out of it. Not because I – first of all, I don't think anyone's earned, a, earned the right to take his spot. But we've already seen what he can do, and he's trust and proven. So we'll, we'll let somebody else get a chance for now. But I don't think anyone's deserved to take his, take his spot in a big game. 
I don't. So I'm out. I'm out. Bang, dude. I, I, I don't. I don't allow that. Michael Bradley is too safe. I want you to answer the real question. Who? All right, who of qual is not of quality to be in the lineup? I I, I generally don't. I generally don't know the lineup. Okay. All right. Well, I can't ask you that question. We have to go. We have to go to the other friend question. <laughs> Do you still keep up with a lot of MLS though, like, or is it kind of like hit or miss when you watch no, a game here? Dude, I do. To be fair, I didn't watch any while I was playing, and then um, since I stopped playing, I probably had like an eight month, eight month little little period where I hated soccer, and um, it was almost painful to watch. And then one day, one day I fell back in love. But dude, these playoffs are awesome with the uh, with the, the single. Like, yeah. I'm so I'm so jealous, and I was I, I was know. always kind of bitching about that while I was playing that the league should go to one game eliminations and. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, obviously you could see now. So who do you got? Like rest so Toronto or New York? Who do you have? I don't know. Toronto, same. I, I got the same. I got the same. I'm six. I'm six for six bracket. Really? Right. Atlanta, <laughs> Atlanta. Philly. And you buttered me up saying, "Oh, you, oh, you, you tried to jinx it." You said, "Oh, I like your guys' odds." When we tried to get you on here, knowing that you picked the guys. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, hey, uh, hold on. In my in my in my bracket, you think I could go against my galaxy, dude? Yeah, Minnesota, that's what I'm saying. Six, six for are, six is six for six is isn't that uh isn't that impressive? Considering you picked all the home teams and the galaxy, so like so that was a by, mandatory. By the pick. way, it was like you guys lost one game at home all year, and if I had to bet, I would have taken you guys. And also, if I had to bet who'd win the battle between you and Zlatan, I would have picked you. So that's a that's there a fact. <laughs> and right. both 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 were true. So Atlanta, I picked, I picked LA, now. bro. I, I picked LA. Who do you have, LAFC, LA Galaxy? Then who do I have, or him? Yeah, I know who. You, well, I don't know who you have actually. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to the game. I'm flying to LA tomorrow, but no, Gal- Galaxy is going to beat him. Oh, okay. what do you think? Yeah, I think Are you LAFC like five, was, five or, or was that it? I don't know. No, that wasn't five, but we kind of got off to a tangent. All right, last question then. Uh, the fan question: Rank these prominent U.S. soccer figures from one to five. <laughs> who's full of shit? <laughs> No, 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 You can't. I know you, you passed on one. I'm passing on one. I, I saw, I saw that question on Twitter. You get to pass on one. I get to pass on one. Go to the next question. All those guys are my boys. Next question. We each get, hey, otherwise I'm just, otherwise I'm just banking. I did the five. Go to the this next fucking inter- question. This is an extra interrogation, I believe. So then I, then I these five, the penny, but I do the five. Do I get, he gets a pass. I get a pass, right? Who got the pass? Ike? I answered the question about, and I picked Michael Bradley. That was five. So now he's he wanted a bonus. Now can I pass on one question? Take that question. <laughs> I'd say I'd say you weaseled out of actually answering the question, but do did it, I did. I picked the player tonight. This is my segment. If you want me to return season two, you do not pull the plug on this. <laughs> Betty, make a ruling. How dude. many questions are you gonna ask him, Mike? Exactly. exactly. Make fine. Whatever, man. Just ask a question. You didn't plead the fifth. I'll just get over it. <laughs> yeah, ask you a question. Man. I'll give you another question. I don't want no, that one. I saw it on Twitter. That one. That one was I painful. Want- all my boys out there. I can't. You hear like. Well, if that was the question that you were going to plead the fifth on, then I don't want it. I took it easy by asking that other question. Right, give me the question. Fine. All right. Here we go. Love it. I you're man enough not to actually give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> you called call my bluff. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. Just plead the fifth when I ask it. Then we're good. I want to hear the five guys are that like are all his buddies. Don Garber, Alexi Lalas, Stuart Holden, Kyle Martino, and Landon Donovan. Dude, this isn't a hard question. You could answer this. Yeah, What's up? like most full of shit, Alexi. Second most full of shit, probably rightfully so, is Don Garber because he did, he's had to kind of build the league to make us all believe that we're we're good servants of the league. And <laughs> really, he was just underpaying us and shit. But I do. I, I love Don. Um, three. We'll go with. Three, fuck. So Landon, Donovan, Landon Donovan's the least full of shit. So now we got two and three. We'll go. You got three and four left. Al Martino. No, I picked four. Two. Four was Garber. Threes. Oh, four was Garber. Three, I'll go with uh, Martino. Love you, brother, but you're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> half, half the time, literally. And then Stu Holden's just, he's all about himself, dude. He's, he's fucking full of shit, too. <laughs> so, is, so is it Alexi, Stu, Kyle Martino, Don Garber, and Landon? You just messed that whole thing up, right? Yeah, that There's, order was uh, correct. <laughs> most full, yeah. goes up. Lexi, 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 most Don, Kyle, Stu, Landon. Man. Oh, I just said it back. Okay, my bad. Got it. All right, he's answered it, bro. He did it. Just hey, real quick, real quick. So Atlanta, <laughs> Philly, you could just write it what? off. Who's gonna win? Atl- Atlanta. Okay, and then Salt Lake, Seattle. Salt Lake. 
Okay. And then Galaxy on the other side. Galaxy Salt Lake. So you got Galaxy going to the final then, I'm assuming, since you're... I'll say, yeah, I'll say this work. one thing. As a player for LAFC <laughs> last year, this is this is my little tidbit on it. I think they have absolutely no chance of losing the conference finals if they get through the Galaxy. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. I'm the, only, the only I'm, team that can maybe beat them in the final, in my opinion, are Atlanta. I don't think anybody else has a chance to beat them in the finals. So Galaxy posed the biggest threat and Atlanta in the final. I think be. LAFC prails in this game. I, I agree, but like everything would would we always I I feel like I always other than that though, so yeah other, everything I, would point to them prevailing other than history right because it's crazy that yeah. Galaxy have to lose to them it's crazy I, I just I don't see um their, their confidence is rattled and they're, they're a team that listen they're 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 incredible and in an easy game they might be the best best team in MLS history I think Galaxy does a good job even changing their own style of play and. And as much as they like to be in pretty, pretty in games, this is the one game where they decide to buckle down and roll up their sleeves and, and foul and, and make it tough on them and, and guys rise to their level. So, yeah, uh, it's going to be a fun game, man. Every time they play, every time we played last year and they played this year, it was uh, uh, unbelievable to watch. Yeah. All right, Mike, a, you get, oh, good. You get to ask uh, one question to any one of us three and we have to answer it honestly. All right. Ike, this is for Ike. Oh, ouch. The right, final so, question of the season. Like I texted. Well, let me go back here. Oh no, I don't know what this is going to be. <laughs> he he really wanted this question. Like, so. like, go into your text right now. Okay. With you? And meet me, oh, the four of us. Okay. Hold on. Um. All right. I said. All right. Hold on. If you go back to yesterday, go to six fifty-two p.m. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, yesterday at six fifty-two. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, you say O oh, like O oh, with four H's. <laughs> yes. Yep. Okay. And then we're we're talking about the podcast. What is your text message to me after the O oh, with four H's? <laughs> and we're talking about how yeah. like I'm like what's going on? What's going on in this podcast? What's it about? And then you said, what did you text? After the O with four H's, I, I said, I'm going to treat you the way Zlatan treats his teammates. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not laughing at that, actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, let's be real. They can't wait for him to go, right? It just has to be like, no, I just know you can't ask any more questions, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's messed up, man. That's messed up. Bro, I, I'll just say one thing about that. When he yelled at Antuna for the pass that he perfectly gave to, to Satan and then he kicked it out of bounds. What what is he doing? <laughs> this guy stripped Antuna's soul for the rest of the game. <laughs> Dude, he I mean he's one of a kind to say the least. He is. I mean, he is one of a kind. He he does some things that what like Maybe zero, nobody can do. Maybe zero, maybe nobody zero. can do, right? Yeah, you can biking a goal from half no. field. <laughs> nobody can, not even like Ronaldo can do stuff that he does. I can't ah, kick nobody. a ball that far. Yeah, so nobody. Yeah, it's crazy, but like, yeah. Anyways, all right, Mike. Well, a massive pleasure you coming on the show f- with us, and uh, I think uh, we really went out with a bang here on uh, the season finale of BS the podcast. So we appreciate you coming on, man. We had uh, we had a lot of fun with you. Pleasure's all mine, boys. Thanks, all right, Mike. Bro, and- and thanks to our uh, our special guests uh, there over there behind the computer, but uh, Mike Grella and Sasha Kleshin for making uh, guest appearances as well. So um, that's all we got for you for this season. We will see you. Good luck in uh, all the rest of the playoffs, everybody. Let's have a lot of fun, and uh, and we'll see you next year after the off season. Love it. Later, dudes. See you. Dude, thanks so much, Mike, for coming on the show. That was a lot of fun. A lot of good. Um, Questions from Ike there, some tough questions, but Mike was not willing to plead the fifth. And then he got Ike back a little bit there, but a lot of fun talking with him. And yeah, man, I think that was a pretty, pretty good season finale, Sal. Yeah. Yeah. Mike's been around the game a long time and played with some big time players. So, uh, you know, he answered some tough questions. Um, uh, you know, shout out to his vodka company, Sneaky Fox. If you guys ever see it, you should check it out. Um, yeah, but. You know, thanks for your support over the course of the season. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been awesome. Just to reiterate to everybody that al- doesn't already know, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, yell or stream on TuneIn, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Play. Rate and comment on Instagram and Twitter and email us your thoughts on Benny Sal, the podcast at Gmail. 
Uh, it's been an awesome ride. Uh, we never thought it would come, you know, as far as it has. And we'll we'll try and have some things in the off season and maybe some bonus episodes if we can, uh, you know, get some good guests or have some interesting topics. Yeah, maybe maybe about. around the MLS Cup. Yeah, maybe we'll around try, the MLS Cup. We'll try and you know yeah. make something uh, that we can, you know have something come up and, 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 and talk about some interesting things that are going on in the playoffs and MLS cup. So, uh, stay tuned and we'll have more for you at the, at the very latest by next season. Yeah. Maybe sometime in late January, February. Yeah. I, I, so like, I don't think we need to like let them know months exactly away, huh? when it's coming, dude. It's a, it's, let them, let them have their break, uh, from, <laughs> from Benny, <laughs> Sal and Ike, and, uh, they'll be ready to go next year. But, we appreciate everything that uh, you guys have done, the, the way you guys have followed us and, and you know, love the podcast. So just keep that stuff up and we'll be back. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. See you guys. Bye.